Contact. Afton. Ready number one, two. Ready number one, two. Fire.
Very nice work, Captain. Very nice. Do you have any trouble getting over the reef? Only one inch of paint I scraped up. The directions you gave to me this morning they're better than official charts. I guess we both understand the details, but... Perfectly, my friend. Pardon me, Captain. If you don't mind, I'd like to go over them. So there'll be no slip-up. Yes, indeed. Go right ahead, Captain. You're to take aboard six torpedoes. All right. You must remain at this base only one hour. You must leave by the same channel you came in, with engines reversed. It's difficult, but I'm sure you can manage it. Yavoy. Once outside the reef, you will lie on the bottom. It's 60 feet, sandy, and listen with your sonic device. Yeah? If all is clear, you may proceed. But remember, and this is important, you must run submerged for exactly four hours. Four hours exactly. Yes. After that, you're on your own. Everything clear? Absolutely perfect. All right, Captain, we'll start him aboard. Time is precious right now. You are right. Right on. Front torpedo room vorbereiten. Front torpedo room vorbereiten. Right on, Schultz. Geben Sie diesen Mann zwei Matrosen zu Hilfe. Jawohl. Spike, start number one alongside. Right here. Captain, I'm very proud of you. An American helping our cause. Der Führer, he will hear of it personally for me. Yeah. Here, come on, you land flappers. Come on, you blighters. Come run in, come on. Come on here. Give me a hand with this here blooming thing. Now, look here. If you're a torpedo, it's got about a thousand pounds of pretty old trodger lol in it. Thinking it's about as kiddish as my old Aunt Fanny. So you've got to give me a hand and treat it very gently, see? This. Here, don't none of you speak and see English? Right. Oh, well, then I can speak freely. Now, look here, you ugly blighters. We've got a trip to light fantastic with Fanny here. And if any of you makes a fox pass, I'm going to kick your blinking teeth in, see? Well, come on, come on, don't stand there. Hey, Captain? Yes, and six beautiful torpedoes under the hatches. And now you want the identification disc, yes? Or you want to get paid for your nice work. Laborer is always worthy of his hire. <laughs> that is good, my friend. Everything's in order now, Captain. Better shove off. Time's running out. Yes, I'll leave immediately. But excuse me, please, before I say goodbye. The name of your little boat is Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Never mind the yodeling. Hi, Lidla. You got what you came for. I'm getting paid for giving it to you. Huh? You are madness. With you, it's always money. You're entitled to your thoughts, Captain. Auf Wiedersehen. Yeah, till we meet again. Attention. Port of traverse, both side, 250, easy. Port of traverse, both side, 250, easy. Yeah, well, aboard this luxury liner, the skipper always has his ham and eggs. Oh, but these crumpets are as light as a hummingbird's wing and the marmalade, sir. Oh, oh. Ham and eggs. Oh, really well, sir. Here, what's that off the port bow? Floating wreckage. Did you ever see wreckage waving its arms? Mike, you're right. Let's take a look. Here, Skipper, give us a hand, will you? Oh. Here you are. Hi. Oh, come on, matey. Give yourself a leg up on this. Here we go. Oh. How you doing, Sailor? I'm all right, I guess. Been in the water long? No. Oh. Maybe two or three hours. 
Oh, it's all right. He'll come around like a blooming horse on a merry-go-round. Yes, take him below. Get him a drink. Funny hot jab. Leave him to me. I'll look after him like a bow street poppy. Come on, matey. Oh. Oh. oh, so you're coming round at last, me, Artie, eh? Well, now, take it easy. Oh, I'm all right. I feel fine. I sure thought my number was up. Thanks to you. Oh, don't you thank me. You thank the skipper. He's to blame. But how you managed to escape all them sharks and barracudas with that lovely lily white skin to bait him with, I'll never learn. Ah, uh, Matty. This is the second ship I've had blown out from under me. Oh, I see. You're making a regular sport of dodging torpedoes. It's no sport, fellow. Believe me, this is a plenty tough war. <laughs> no, no, I know it. Well, there you are, me hero. You shut that over yourself, and by the time you're through with that, you'll be the living image of Annie Sherry. Uh, I don't feel I'm any hero. I'm just trying to do what I feel I should do. I had a pretty sweet job. Tossed it in the ash can the day after Pearl Harbor. Tried to get in the Navy. They wouldn't take me. The Army said no, politely, but firmly. And the Marines, <laughs> the Marines laughed in my face. Oh, I know. Ain't it a crime and shame the way they treat a bloke these days? You know, I think it's a real shame. That's what it is. Yeah, maybe you're right. But they overlooked one bet. The Merchant Marine. They couldn't keep me out of that. And laugh this off. What do you think they call me? Uh oh Not by any chance, Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> no. Able-bodied seaman. Get it? Able-bodied seaman. James Xavier Taggart. Very happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. James Xavier Taggart. Thank you. Spike! Spike! Aye, aye, Skipper. Hit the deck. Spam me the hill. Aye, aye, sir. That's funny. He hardly ever has me to tell him at the wheel. You know, I think the Skipper's coming below to pay his own personal compliments to you, Mr. Taggart. Spike! Aye, aye, sir. What is it, Captain? Take her in over the coral reef. Aye, aye, sir. million people it had to be you. Detective Lieutenant Jim Taggart, New York Copper Deluxe. Ex-copper to you, Morgan. I turned my badge in. Taggart, you'll always be a copper. Every inch of you. Skip it for the duration. In the meantime, thanks for pulling me out. Don't remind me I ever gave a cop an even break. I'd never live it down to the boys back home. Joe, I know you had plenty of good reasons for leaving town, but, but what on earth are you doing so far off the beaten track? Fishing. Fishing. <laughs> fishing. Who'd ever think Joe Morgan would be satisfied with fishing for a living? Suits me, copper. Don't get any funny ideas. What do you mean? Collecting that little reward that's out for me, remember? That slight case of murder you tried to pin on me? You're a liar. I've waited a long time to get you in a spot like this, Taggart. I had to toss you right back to the mermaids. If you think you're big enough, start tossing. I'm big enough, but I'm also a sucker. I'm gonna give you the best of it. More than you ever did for me. Keep talking, you're the skipper. I'm putting you on the beach, on a little tropical island you never even heard of. Yeah? Yeah. From flatfoot to sailor to beachcomber in three easy lessons. <laughs> Not bad. Where is this finishing school of yours? Right here on the equator. Latitude zero. Island of St. Jean, huh? St. John used to be an old pirate's hangout. So that's your hideaway, huh? It's still a pirate's hangout. These are over the reef, Spike. There's enough bottom. Very good, sir. It's 
St. John. That's the halfway house there on the beach above the cove. Colty looking scenery? Yeah, heaven. Or whatever else you want to make it, Mr. Policeman. Sailor to you, Captain Morgan. You bragging? Sure, why not? I'm doing my bit the hard way. Well, that makes a six, two, and even. I'm proud of little Joe Morgan. Yeah, you ought to be, you lug. Didn't anybody ever tell you there's a war on? Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Look, Joe, you never had much of a conscience. You always played hard in strange rackets, but that's all different now. Our country's in this mess up to here. You're a guy with plenty of guts, pretty handy with machine guns. Now, you claim you, you never dabbled in murder, okay. Why don't you go back and clear yourself and then, and then do a job for Uncle Sam? I'll take care of Uncle Sam. I got my own brand of patriotism. Fishing? Yeah, yeah, fishing. Now get this straight, Taggart. I'm warning you. This isn't the United States and there's no extradition law here. So if you're figuring on taking me back, remember, it's strictly off your beat. Just make the best of it and keep out of my hair. All right. We understand each other, I guess. Except for one thing. What's that? You still think I'm wearing the badge, don't you? Certainly. When you go to bed, you probably pin it on your nightshirt. Open up. Joe! Oh, sure. Come in. Oh, are we glad to see you, Joe Morgan. Tell this ugly grizzle push you're taking us off this crown in your lugger. Go ahead, tell him. Well, I, uh... Oh, Joe, you did promise us that. That's the best thing he does, promises. Sure, sure, Judy. Uh, maybe a little later. Maybe next week I can take oh, care of it. Oh, next week. That's what you always say, next week. And that's too late. I have a date to marry a Marine in Brooklyn. Yeah, nothing but phony promises. That's all he's been handing us. Say, what do you think we are, a bunch of dopes? What goes? When do we sail, Captain? Now, wait a minute, girls. I want to keep my promise to you, believe me. But things keep coming up I have to attend to. What things? Private things, sister, private things. Ah, oh, take off the false face. I know you, Joe Morgan. Forget about it, Dorothy. We're only making fools of ourselves, begging and pleading with him like this. You've got a lot to learn, young lady. I'm the guy that's on the griddle. How come you got mixed up in the fireworks, Mr. Stix? They want to run off on me. They don't want to give me any entertainment. They want their own personal disappearances. That's us, the five Houdini. Huh. Oh, a walkout strike, huh? Haven't you heard that strikes are out for the duration? Ah, don't be funny. Besides, I got the contract. Ham it up. And that's it. We're quitting. Quitting? That don't make sense. Well, it's simply that I... Well, the girls and I decided that we hadn't... Oh, better... you make me sick, Judy. You're trying to be too ladylike. I'll tell them. Listen, us girls are fed up. We come to this thinking island to put on a show for nice people. So the booking agent was a liar. We'll skip that. But what do we get? An audience full of wolves, gorillas, and riffraff. And all of them grabbing at us with their big hairy paws. Well, so far they missed. But our luck might run out. And we don't want to start sobbing over spilt milk. Anyway, crying makes my mascara run. Dorothy's right. We can't stand it anymore. The heat, the awful conditions. Everything's wrong with it. You're getting paid for it, don't you? Paid? Yeah, seashells before they're made into buttons. Listen, girls. I know how you feel, and you're right. I don't blame you. Broadway's the dish for girls like you, not this dump. But take it easy. In the meantime, if it'll make things any better, Mr. Stix will probably pay you a little more dough. But just keep her, I guess. Shut up. Nothing doing. We're not interested. How much? 
Another hundred a week to split? I can't hear a word you say. Louder. Two hundred in advance. Oh, Joe, it isn't the money. Oh, I wouldn't say that, kid. Two hundred dollars? Morgan, are you crazy? I can't even afford two more dollars. What do you mean you can't afford it? Stop ribbing these gals. Great kidder. <laughs> That's all right, if you put it that way. <laughs> what else can I do? <laughs> That's very generous of you, Mr. Sticks. <laughs> then it's a deal? I suppose so. <laughs> the show must go on, to coin a phrase. But what about my Marine? Wait a while, sister, and marry him in Tokyo. Dorothy, you're a great gal. You ought to be headlined at Minsky. <laughs> I'll go peddle your fish. Joe, you won't forget about that little boat trip, will you? How could I ever forget? Bye. I can't understand why you won't the layout. Two hundred dollars per week for those things. Why not, Tonda? You won't get this money. I said I'd pay it, didn't I? So you get your show, hang the ladder, invite everybody, the drinks are on me. Yes, that I will indeed. But why in the devil you keep promising them that you're going to take them and you logger when you don't mean one word you say? The guy's got to be polite to ladies, don't he? Mr. Sticks, Jim Taggart. How do you do? A friend of the skipper is a friend of mine. Hi. <laughs> Keep over on that side of the line, Savvy. Hey, what's the gag? That's the equator. You're standing in the northern hemisphere. You see the skipper, he stands in the southern part of the hemisphere. It is the true, it's a geographical line. As a matter of fact, it separates the world in two. Taggart, cold, hot, winter, summer, get it? Yeah, maybe. Well, at least you get some idea of what chance a snowball has in hot water. Yeah. In other words, there isn't room for the two of us on the same side of the map. Ah, uh, you gentlemen want a drink? Yeah, set them up. Right. That ought to keep you off the bread line for a while. This fishing racket of yours must be pretty sweet, eh, Joe? You said it. When that 50's gone, give him whatever he needs, on your cuff. On my cuff? That reminds me, Mr. Sticks, I need another watch. Another watch? Angela, another watch. Yes, sir. I'll be. You're losing more watches than a watchmaker. Yeah, it's one of my best weaknesses lately, losing watches. Another drink, Skipper? Add my lemon. So have I. And now, Mr. Kitaki, most beautiful look. Yeah, thanks. If it doesn't work, bring it back. It's guaranteed. I haven't brought one back yet, have I? All I want of a watch is for it to run six or seven hours. And by that time, you lose it. <laughs> Hi, Senorina. You go for a promise? It was so stuffy up in the dressing room, I thought I'd go over to the cottage for a while. My poor little butterfly. How do you understand? This is a bed. A very good place for the border. Now you go. Try, Mrs. Six. So long, Copper. And remember, no homework. running through your mind. You think I'm a first-class rat. I hadn't really thought about it. Well, sure you do. And I don't blame you a bit after the song and dance I've been giving you. Let's forget about it, shall we? After all, you're under no obligation to us. It's simply that, well, you were perhaps our only way out. And I suppose we counted on it too much. I'm sorry. Sorry? Judy, if there's one sorry guy in the world, I'm it. There's nothing I want to do more than to take you and the girls on the Yankee Doodle and get you off this godforsaken hunk of coral. You're a strange person, Joe. But why did you do Don't ask, Judy, please. I shan't. Judy, there's something else I wanted to say to you. Listen, I won't ever deliberately lie to you again. That's out. 
But if a steamer doesn't put in here pretty quick, I'll find some way of taking you to Brazil myself, just as soon as, well, as soon as I can. But I can't make an honest promise just when. Is that clear? It has to be, doesn't it? For the time being. I think I believe you, Joe. Thanks. Well, I have to get back to my place before dark. But tonight, you will be back in, won't you? To see the show? You bet. That's a promise. I'll see you later. Bye. Here you are, Mr. Taggart. There's your change. You paid up for a month. Food and lodging. Drinks are extra. That's Morgan's money. Give it to him. No, no, no. You better put it in your pockets. He's got plenty anyway. Nothing doing. I'm going to get the first ship out of here. Finish my job with the Merchant Marine. The trouble around here is nobody seems to realize there's a war going on. Mr. Taggart, we all know about the war. Ships are stuff very seldom around here in our days. You might get stuck in the Isle of San John for a long, long time. If I was you, I wouldn't go around shouting about my opinions. Well, it might be very unhealthy for you. Thanks for the tip. Don't mention it. What's the chances of sending a wireless or a cable? Not so good. But you might try the commissioner. Commissioner Egg. He's got the official sesso hereabouts. Egg? Yes. Where's his office? In his house, but he's never there. Isn't this room there? Thanks. Mr. Tiger. Mr. Tiger. Never mind. When you go see Commissioner Hick, you tell him that you're very, very good to find of Angela. And he helps you. Angela, Angela fixes everything. Thanks, Mr. Stix. I will. Uh, please take the money. Don't be crazy. Take the money. Uh, well, maybe you're right. <laughs> I'm looking for Commissioner A. I am the Commissioner of St. John. And my name, if you please, is Aristide Anatole Marie de Montfort Durf. And not A. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Durf? Hmm. This one time, I forgive you. But please, I beg of you, do not again scramble my good name. And now, if you please, what is it you wish? I was torpedoed from an American boat. Yes, I know you are an American. So I want to get another ship. I want to go to an American port right now. A very worthy and patriotic wish, but there will be no ships here soon, I do not think. So I've been told. But if I could send a radiogram, a wireless. A transmitting wireless, we have not. A cable? Table. We have yes. Good, fine. Allow you to arrange so that I can tell them that I was picked up and where I am. Oh no 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 no, Monsieur, that is impossible. It is not permissible. Say la guerre. Well, remember, I'm an American citizen. Unfortunately, Monsieur, this is not America. It is indeed regrettably so. Commissioner, you're making a mistake. You can't do that to me. No. I, Aristide Anatole Marie de Montfort, de, Commissioner de Lille de Saint Jean, and I assure you, I am the first and the last word of the law on this island. Don't fret about him. He'll be back. See here, Mr. Tiger. Why not simply try to make the best of it? Tiger? News travels fast on this island. And quite logically. This is a very friendly little community. I'm David Cavanaugh. Been here so long, I've grown root. How do you do? You're English, huh? Oh, definitely. Army, India. Had a bit of a nasty brawl. Not really my fault, understand. But, you know, regulations and all that. Looked rather black for me, so, so I chucked the whole messy thing. And this is Mr. Crow, Mr. Anton Crow. Such a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Taggart. And uh, such good luck to lose your beautiful boat. Thanks, yeah. Nice to know you, Mr. Kroll. And you're, uh... Me? I am a Hollander. A man without a country and, uh, without a business. I was an exporter, importer, but today I'm practically ruined. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad. Well, it's nice knowing you gentlemen, but I'm still on the spot. Have you any suggestions as to what I might do? Well, you might take a hand in our game. 
Now, look here, Marriott. I'm telling you for the last time to get out of here before the skipper returns. Oh, shut up, you old owl. Or I'll throw this thing right at you. Now, look here. I was only spoofing, that's all. Away from Joseph. So get out. Uh, 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 scat, uh, shush, scram. Now, look here. Look here, Mary. You're a great lady. A very fine lady indeed. So why can't you try and behave nice and proper? She's not nice and proper because Mary loved Joseph. Oh, that fits all right, but you're always rushing around after him, making a slave of yourself for him, doing his cooking after all. I'm the one to do his cooking for him. Oh, tea and comfort, huh? <laughs> well, Joseph, he don't like tea and comfort. Well, well what are you cooking? Tea and comfort. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that to him because I love him too much. Yes, that's all very well, but what would your mother and papa stick say if they could see you rushing around the place like a, like a blooming wild scholar? I don't care. Maria, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, I'm cooking. Wild pig and uh, sweet peas, uh, carrots and wild and... Get sweet. off. Oh, please. Oh, Joseph, don't you understand? I love you, Joseph. I love you. Oh, why do you always think this is like little baby? Maria, I'm going to take you over my knee and give you a good spanking. Now, get out. Oh, oh please, don't, Joseph. Vamos. Okay, I go, but you'll be sorry. Fine watchdog you are. What do you let her run all over you for? Oh, it's beyond my mental and physical powers of endurance to cope with her. Honest to goodness, this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get going. We've got work to oh, do. Oh, but just a moment, Governor. What about the, what about the grub? We'll attend to that later. You got the stuff? All right, let's get going. What's that gimme? Storm signal? No, actually, it's an advertisement that Mr. Morgan has put it on tonight. Free drinks, free food, free entertainment. Everybody from the island is coming here. here. Throwing a party, huh? Yeah. Well, how often does all this happen? Whenever he pleases. Imagine that. Well, what does it get him? Nothing. I only know it brings me good business. He always pays right on the barrel head cash. <laughs> Mr. Taggart, you better come over here tonight. There's going to be a lot of things doing. <laughs> I will. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Sit down, please. And have a drink. Thanks. I'll accept the seat, but skip the drink. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> I thought all sailors drink like little fishes. Just an old-fashioned sea yarn. Oh, of course. He proves it. 
Uh, by the way, Mr. Taggart, before you were a sailor, uh, what were you? Well, sir, before I joined the Merchant Marine, I was a New York policeman. You mean uh, of the American Gestapo? <laughs> Some of those New York cops you hear you call them Gestapo. <laughs> No, no, it's just an ordinary genre. Flatfoot. Oh, yes, yes, I know. You mean, uh, you, you, you walk the papers, didn't you? Yeah, I guess that just about sizes it up. I don't care. Well, I don't understand. Ah, but you understand the uh, Skipper Morgan, yes? Well, yes, of course, but what oh, do you mean? shut up now, you listen. You leave my Joseph alone. You spin his head around until he thinks I'm nothing but little child. Why, Joseph, he loves Maria. He is mine. He belongs to me. You find out mine. Oh, Maria, don't be ridiculous. Well, he's nothing to me but a fellow American. After all, I have to be pleasant to him. I'm working for your father. Oh, you are a very lovely lady. I don't think. You are stupid fools. You hear stupid fools. What do you mean? Why, my papa, he don't pay for you. No, my Joseph, he pay my papa $200 to keep you here. How do you know? My papa to my mama, and my mama to me. And my papa never liked my mama. Oh. Run along, Maria. Captain Morgan belongs to you, believe me. I wouldn't want him as a gift. Oh. Maybe you are lovely, lady. I think I go now. Oh, just a second, Maria. Do you happen to know where Captain Morgan is right now? Suppose I know. You think I tell you? <laughs> See, I got here after all. Yeah. After all. Well, I am a little late, but the guy's got to do his fishing when the fish run. It won't happen again. Oh, it makes no difference, Joe. Never mind. I wanted to return this bribe money to you. Kid, you got me wrong. Oh, take it. I'm not for sale. Don't think you can buy and sell me like so much fish. Listen to me. There's a reason for everything. On the level. You couldn't be on the level. Not even with Joe Morgan. Someday I'll show you how wrong you are. Sure, I gave sticks to do. Not to keep you stranded here, but because I've been falling down on my promise. Call it conscience money if you want, but believe me, Judy, it wasn't the old double cross. Terribly hard not to believe you, Joe. Then you do. No. Do you expect me to? When you break your promise time and time again without any plausible excuse? Just what are you doing, Joe? Well... Right now, I'm fishing. Oh, gentlemen, will you excuse me? I need some tobacco. Uh, would you give me some tobacco? Please, skipper. Island. Island's a little bit of all right. It's the people have poisoned it. What do you mean by that? Nearly play on words. You meant Joe Morgan, didn't you? As well as the others. He seems to have a nice uh, supply of ready cash. Mr. Taggart, confidentially, I wouldn't go putting my nose into his business. Morgan's a strange goose. He wouldn't like it. Might be a risky undertaking. 
Check and double check. Further, it's really none of our affair. Maybe not. How does he do with his fishing business? I'd say a pound a week. Five bucks a week. Terrific. <laughs> but it don't add up in my book. My man, if I were you, I'd shy clear of higher mathematics. If you don't mind drinking on tainted money, I'll buy a drink. Not at all. Hey, you. Yes, you. Here's a bottle of bourbon. Hey, off. I don't know you don't pay. Morgan pay everything. Take that, he's still paying. Okay, ten dollars. Steep, but uh, how about a clean glass? Oh. Okay. Glass. <laughs> Morgan live here at the halfway house? Where? The little shaft of Crescent Beach. First one over Stonebridge. I see. will happen to you. Here, old man, sit down. No, no, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, go ahead, tell me what happened. Well, I'll come clean. You remember when I left last night? Well, I found Morgan's place. I went in and frisked it. You what? Frisked it. Searched it. Well, I found something I couldn't quite figure out, so I started back looking for you. That's all I remember. I must have went out like a light because I came to with a sore head and not a dime in my pocket. Robbery happens frequently here. Oh, I'm not so sure. How long did Morgan hang around? At least a couple of hours after you left, and the line you with them. That gives them a beautiful alibi. But Taggart, what did you find at Morgan? A half a dozen round discs about that size. Had German lettering on them, and that double cross swastika. Well, I grabbed one and beat it. Then clunk. Could you read any of the words on the disc? Well, as near as I could make it out, it said, Duchess Rich Krieg Marine. Deutsches Reich Kriegs Marine. Good gracious, man, that means the German Navy. Was there a number on it? Yes, I think there was. Could have been an identification disc. They, they wear them, I believe. Well, anyway, it's something that ties Morgan with those dirty, stinking Nazis. If you had the blaster thing, we could probably... And that's the trouble. It's with the money. <laughs> I suspected as much. I'll tell you one thing. If he's a wrong one, I'll put that mug Morgan where he belongs. Can I count on you, Kavanaugh? Definitely. Do you know where we can get a couple of rods, pistols? Also, quite definitely. Good day, Maria. Uh, what brings you here? I want some smelling water from Paris. What? Smelling water. You know, that stuff that you put on and smells so good. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you mean uh, perfumery? Uh-huh. Just one moment. There. Oh. Oh, you like my shawl, yes? Filippo give it to me. My, my. This is cute. Where did you get it? Filippo give me this too. You like, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, have you got another one? I always wanted one for myself. No. Oh, that is too bad. For one, I'd give uh, three bottles of perfumery. Oh, no, I cannot. Filippo give me this. Oh, maybe four. There. 
One, two, three, four. Four? Oh, why, that's different. Here, take it. I give it to you. Oh, no, no, no. What would the Filippo say? Oh, Filippo, Filippo. Oh, he don't care. But he smell how I smell. Well, he be very glad, you see. All right. Then you take my lovely perfume. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Come on, Spike, let's hurry ashore. Right, you are, Skipper. There's your bubble bath, all ready for you. Beats me where they get all the submarines. There's another one coming in tonight. Yeah, not the one tonight I'm worrying about. It's the one last night that I'm anchoring to get paid for. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Spike. Here, here you are. Oh, only two dollars. And us getting 500 the torpedo from them ironies? Why, well, it's not fair. I could resign. Maybe that's not a bad idea, Spike. I feel like splitting up the dough we've put away and chucking the whole deal overboard. Why, everyone on this island hates my insides. It's not worth it. Besides, I owe these dames a square break and I've been meaning to give it to them. What do I do? Make a chump out of myself and them too. Oh, but you are not going to resign now, Skipper, are you? Not now we've got everything running as smooth as a three-ring circus. Yeah, we are doing all right, that's a fact. And if it's dames you're worrying about, take my advice. Dames are the missing button in the wet wash of life, I know. In spite of your quaint advice, my little chum, I do want to make good to them. Understand? Yes, sir, I do. Where did you get that jewelry? I told you I found it. Where did you get it? I, uh, uh Taggart gave it to me. I want the truth. <sighs> you stole it. Yes, Mr. Crow, but I did not mean it. I was crazy with drink. What else do you know about Taggart and Morgan? Huh? You savvy what happens to thieves, don't you? Oh, oh, please, Mr. Crow. I, I don't please. Only one thing. What? Morgan give money to Taggart. Filippo, uh, maybe you are a good boy. You, you want to make some honest money, don't you? Yes. All right, then... Uh, you watch Taggart and Morgan for me. And tell me everything, wherever they go and uh, everything you see. Yes, Mr. Crawl, I work good for you. Good. But uh, don't tell anyone about this uh, little business arrangement, huh? Oh, no, Mr. Crawl, no one. All right. And I hope you're not going to deny that Morgan has been sweetening sticks with dough to pass on to you. Well, I certainly can deny that I ever accepted any of his money. Okay, okay. All I want to find out is why and where Morgan gets such a heavy bankroll. Fishing, I suppose. You're quite a help. And another thing. Have you ever noticed that Morgan never comes here early on the nights where there's something doing? I don't like your insinuations, Mr. Tag. You've no right to cross-examine me like a, a criminal. Or is this some cheap trick? Did Joe Morgan send you here? Take it easy, Miss Pearson. Remember, I'm an ex-copper. I guess I'll never get over it. Anyway, I never had more reason to be a copper than right now. I'm going to find out what Morgan's racket is. His racket? I don't know what you mean. All right. I'll give it to you straight and fast. Joe Morgan... Better let me tell her, old man. All right, all right. Give it to her in the Oxford accent. Maybe it'll sound better coming from you. Now, wait. If you expect me to do anything to hurt Joe, Just I Just a moment, my dear. We may be entirely wrong. And somehow, I should like to be proved wrong. But on the other hand, if we're right, nothing must stand in the way of our carrying on. Your country and mine are fighting for their very lives. And the duty of each one of us should be very clear. Isn't that so? Yes, of course. Go on. There is certain evidence, circumstantial, I'll admit, that Joe Morgan is dealing with our enemies. What do you want me to do? Good girl. Keep the show going and stick out your chin. Where's your old man? Oh, hello, Joseph. Oh, you don't like my shawl, huh? Yeah, very pretty. Where is he? Oh, in the back sleeping, I think. Philippe won't give me the shawl. Nice, huh? Yeah, yeah. Run along and tell your father I'm going to see him when he wakes up. Tell him now when he's asleep so he'll remember it. Oh, uh, all right. I will tell him. Morgan.
Come here and sit down. Will you try my tobacco? Don't mind if I do. Where'd you get this? Never mind where I got it. Taggart had it. Impossible. Impossible, nothing. You on your crazy American games, keeping these things for souvenirs. <laughs> I told you to destroy them. Oh, no. You're a fool. Careful, Crow. I'll spread that nose all over your face. You be careful. You and the Taggart are very good friends. I know. Friends? You're nuts. I even despise his distant relations. Yes, but uh, you give him plenty of money. What of it? I give money to beggars, don't I? Morgan, something inside here tells me you're crooked with me. Use your head, Crow. Maybe I lost it. What does that prove? Haven't I kept my part of the bargain? Six of those babies I've taken care of, and you've paid me plenty of dough. I'm no sucker. Maybe. Maybe you're all right. Excuse me. But, uh, he staggered. He was once a policeman. He knows too much for both of us. Better if he was dead. You said he was my friend. I always take care of my friends. You won, Miss Keeper? Why, yes, I need another watch. Uh, come on, we will see. Excuse me, Mr. Crow. Well, I hope I convinced you I was right. The Brooklyn Dodgers are still the best team in the National League. Oh, yeah, yes. I think so, yeah. Good. Here, if it doesn't work, bring it back. And bring it back right now. It doesn't work. Give me another one. But it's finished. This is the last one. What? No more. Maybe after the war, we were plenty. But I need a watch. I gotta have one. Morgan, I can lend you my watch. I got another one. Well, I couldn't think of it. Thanks just the same. Oh, you'll return it to me when you find yours. You know how I am about watches. I lose every one I get. Ask Mr. Stix. That's right. That's all right. I trust you. Take it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. Thanks a million, Mr. Crow. Well, I gotta run along now and do a little fishing for a change. Don't forget, Mr. Stix, the party's on me, again tonight. Goodbye and, uh, good luck. Thanks. move on. They're doing any time now. Yes, well, if you want to pay three fast and fancy with 500 pounds of fleet cash and final, it'd have to be your own funeral, Skipper. Spike, we're losing time. Give me that screwdriver. I'll see you.
Frank. Attention! I go ashore. Bigger than anything I could dream of. Traitor skunk. I'll blow the top of his head off. Take it, you can't whip a submarine with a pair of pistols. Easy now, easy. Sure, get that dog. If you'd calm down and listen to reason. Go on, I'm way ahead of you. You're right. We should get them all. The brains and everything behind this, this treachery. We can sure have a go at it. That's quite in line with my instructions when I was ordered here. I understand everything nicely. Here is my identification. Spike, start the torpedoes alongside. Any good, sir? One other thing. This evening I received a message to transmit to you verbally. The Admiralty instructs me to inform you in her call that for a period of three weeks, no undersea boat will put in here for service. I see. And that her call will be notified by shortwave in the usual code when to expect further, shall we say, customer? And very well said. And remember, it's mean low tide right now. Lie on the bottom till midnight before attempting passage through the reef. Thank you. I go aboard my ship to supervise the loading. I'll run him right down to you, Captain. Thank you for saving this for you. No more jobs for three weeks. You know what three weeks means? Yeah, 21 days. No, 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 my charming little chum from Cardiff. It means a vacation. Oh, what are we going to? Monte Carlo? Wrong again. We're going to keep a promise. Oh, you mean we didn't show go? Exactly. They get a break on our vacation. We're taking them off the island. Well, let's get a move on. Oh, gee, Captain, can't we rest a while? Spike, get this. We're spotted. I think it's that sniveling copper. Probably guns on our backs right now. You make for the boat. I'll grab off the girl. Douse your lights when I say now and run like blazes. I'll be lost in here for a week. Now. Come on, here. Miss the flies. You get out of that boat. I'm going after Morgan. Good luck. Cheerio. Everybody is. Uh, that's the stuff. That's what I like to see. Uh, Pardon me, but uh, I have no more tobacco. Have you got any, please? Seems as if you're always running out of tobacco, Mr. Crow. Yes, yes, it is a pity, isn't it? shoving off, but keep it under your curls so you walk out. You wouldn't be kidding. Sister, you'll be seasick in an hour. Somehow you're not gonna believe you this time. And with my own eyes, I see this. And then I hear with my own ears, Morgan say laughing like a devil, this will blow those Nazi swine clear out of the water. He also say he'd take girls with him tonight. Just what are you running away from? Not away from, away with the grand dish. I'm not going with you. Oh, yes, you are, Judy. She'll be on deck, Joe. Okay. Judy! We're getting out of this place! Hurry up! Hiya, Tiger. Wait a minute, Morgan. You'll peddle your last torpedo. Go easy with that gun, Copper. Easy, I'll give you a bit slug in at you, yellow rat. I said go easy. You only know half the answers. Keep moving and keep talking. I'm willing to listen to the other half. Make it look good when we get outside. Okay. 
I'm gambling with your life. Mr. Morgan? Yes, Mr. Crow. You think you're a very smart man, don't you? Well, I know everything you've been doing. What's he driving at? Take a look out that window. Hey! Hey, girl! Come here! What was that? The half of the answers you didn't know, Copper. What do you mean by that? That was the German submarine you saw me servicing in the cave. <laughs> Grandish, Judy. Did you get him, Copper? You're hurt, Joe. Hurt bad. Don't feel a thing. It was a great gag while it lasted. Just a little old two-dollar watch, a couple of flashlight batteries wired to the firing mechanism. Makes me laugh. Six of them. And the last one. Crow's watch. I got it, Joe. Joe Morgan's private navy, huh? Take the girls up. The Yankee doodle. Will you? See you. Yes, he sure had his own brand of patriotism, all right. No uniforms, no medals, no glory. Just another life dedicated to the freedom that we know and love. Freedom of speech and of religion. Freedom from want and freedom from fear. 